Hey, what's up? I have some huge news for my Terran plugin for Godot called TerraBrush. I'm super excited to announce that starting with the new version, the full plugin is available as a GD extension, meaning that you're going to be able to use it with any version of Godot. For example, here, I run it on the version 4.5 stable of Godot. The .NET version, not needed anymore. How awesome is this? Let me explain to you why it's a big deal and why I'm really happy about this. If you've been following my channel for a while now, you know that I've been talking about this plugin for probably too long. But I'm having a lot of fun. So me working on it, it's not really a problem. It's a free and open source project. That's pretty cool. And it got somewhat popular for some reason. That makes me really happy. It's fun to see that a lot of people are enjoying it. It's cool, but there's an issue with it. It's a C Sharp plugin, meaning that if you want to run it, you're gonna need to have the Godot.NET version. I mean, for me, it's perfect because all of my projects are in C Sharp. This is a language I really enjoy. And TerraBrush was created for my own use at first. The problem is for the people that doesn't use Godot.NET. There is something that always annoyed me with the plugin. For the people that are not used to the C Sharp language, it was not as easy as a GD extension to install. A lot of people were having issues installing it and that made me sad. Not only that, but TerraBrush being a C-sharp add-on, it means that you cannot export your game, for example, for the web, which is usually perfect for game jams and stuff like that. Because of all that, some people didn't want to try it, and that makes a lot of sense. Well, since TerraBrush is reaching the 1k stars, I think it's time to change that. It's go time. <laughs> Alright, so I asked my good old friend Google, and I even felt lucky. Sadly enough though, no answers for me here. But then I remembered something. I saw this awesome repository about Godot.net. This is most likely the future of .NET for Godot. I know that this repository is still experimental right now and is not ready for release, but that really makes me want to try it because there is one feature that is really exciting. And this is the fact that you can build your add-on using the native AOT system from Microsoft. Basically, it allows you to build your C-sharp code into native code without even the need to have the .NET runtime anymore. Oh wow, this solution is perfect for me because it allows me to still develop in C Sharp while delivering a GD extension that can run with the default Godot. So I started to do some experiments and that kind of worked. I was able to do the basic stuff like printing. <laughs> But it didn't take too long before I hit a wall. The system was so unstable, I had so many crashes, and I could not really fix the issues because of how native AOT works. I even went ahead and tried to debug Godot itself, but in the current state right now, I don't think this is possible to do it. That makes me really sad because this was such a promising solution that could have been the answer to my problem. But I think I need to give up on this one. <laughs> Next, I guess, I remembered seeing this talk from Miguel de Icaza. He was talking about the origin of C-sharp and everything. He's a creator of uh, Mono, Xamarin and really cool stuff like that, so he's really cool. One of the things that he talked about is the challenge to have the C-sharp garbage collector that works well with Godot. To be fair, this was exactly the problem I faced, so anyways, his solution to that problem is to use the Swift programming language. And I know what you're gonna say, Swift is only made for Mac and iOS and stuff like that. Well, are you sure about that? The answer is no. You can use Swift programming language with the platform you want. It works with iOS, Linux, macOS, and even Windows. And now, thanks to Miguel, it also works with Godot. At this point, let's give it a try. We don't have anything to lose. Why not? So I created a really basic test with a minimal project to see if it works at least, and it works. To be fair, that was not too complicated to start with, and that's exciting, that's learning a new language, and it's always fun to do for me. But before to continue with this implementation of the project, I need to check something. And yeah, apparently when you build the Swift Godot, you will also need to have the runtime itself, which makes a lot of sense, but if we look at this file, it's a 200 megabytes. So it means that when I'm gonna deliver TerraBrush, I'm gonna also deliver 200 megabytes worth of runtime for Swift. Again, that makes a lot of sense, just that I really wanted to avoid some new dependencies. So, 
Dang it! Next again, I guess. Well, I remembered also seeing Godot Rust. I don't know anything about Rust, but if I look at the project, that seems like a fun thing to do. And that project has been around for a long time now, so I'm pretty sure it's a good one. Same as for Swift, this is also exciting because this is like learning a new language. Same process as before, I made a really simple project that just prints Hello World when the add-on starts. Well, that was easy. That just worked first try. So that's cool. Okay, let's try it on a Windows sandbox so we can make sure it runs on everyone's computer. This is just a Windows virtual machine that has really just the minimum to run. This is perfect to make that kind of test to make sure it runs not only on my computer but someone else's computer. And sweet! It doesn't work. Apparently no one mentions that Rust needs to have the Microsoft Visual C++ installed on the machine. If you don't have it, it just refuses to work. And as soon as I install it on the virtual machine, well, everything just starts to work. The hello world just prints out when I open Godot, that's amazing. I know what you're gonna say, everyone probably already have this installed on their machine, but it's just a new dependency that I need to handle. All right, I'm gonna go cry. All right, I feel like there is only one option that I know will work, and this is to use the Godot C++. I genuinely didn't want to use C++ because it's been a long time since I've done some C++, and I really didn't want to manage all the memory and the pointers and stuff like that. But well, if this is what it takes. So after a lot of work and a lot of commits, I can say that the full project of TerraBrush that was in C Sharp before is now fully in C++. That was painful, that was long, but guess what? Now it's done. So I updated the readme and now we have the GD extension here and for the rest of it, it's pretty simple. You just have to either download it from GitHub itself or you could probably find it on the asset lib. I'm pretty sure it's going to be updated pretty soon. And then it's about the same as it used to be. You just add the TerraBrush node. The rest of it works the same way. For example, here, if I open a brand new project, I download the zip from GitHub, I drop it inside of my folder. After that, when you get back to Godot, it's already installed. You don't even need to go back to the project settings and enable the add-on. Now, if I add a new scene, I should see the TerraBrush node. And if I add it just like that, I should see the brand new terrain menu that is in the toolbar now that allows me to either create the terrain, remove it or update it and stuff like that. Like it used to be, you can now sculpt the terrain. Oh wow! And it works with the default Godot. How amazing is that? There is also another cool thing here is that you can add the web export here and if I press play, it will open the browser with our cool TerraBrush scene. Okay, this is really fun, but there is also another fun thing now. I added a TerraBrush editor node that you can link to your terrain node. When you do that and you press the play button, it will allow you to do the editing, but inside of your game. This is perfect to let your players create their custom map. Of course, all the UI elements of TerraBrush also works in game, but you could create your own to fit your style. A, but guess what? All of this also works in the web. This is amazing in my opinion. Okay, all of this was a really long process and a hard job to do, but at the end, I think it was worth it. All of this was not possible to do in C-sharp before, so I think it's a really cool improvement. Oh, but guess what? I think I have an idea. Now that we have the web export, I think it would be really fun to have a live demo of TerraBrush that runs on HIO that let you just play with it just like that. It's a pre-configured terrain that let you just play with it with some textures and some foliage and some trees just to have fun. Of course you can do more in Godot, but I like the idea of having it almost like a game. Well, it's available right now on HIO. You can try it. Please let me know if you do. Anyways, folks, that's all I had to show for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it and we're going to see each other on the next one.